Hello and welcome to another perspective chat and I've decided to call this one Safe Surfer um, because the actual name Safe Surfer comes from a, uh, a song by Julian Cope, an artist um, that I listened to um, back in the late 1980s and also Safe Surfer suggests um, safely surfing the waves that are to come and that's the theme of, of the subject I want to talk about because just yesterday I recorded um, the most recent quartet session and the subject was um, on coronal mass ejections from the sun and their potential impact upon uh, human life or human evolution. Now I started uh, my opening remarks uh, with the quartet by saying that um, the danger is that humanity um, gets stuck in a looping pattern um, and that looping pattern is based on um, predictive programming and predictive programming is how you know people are, are programmed into a predicted path and then they fulfill that path that they're predicted to move into and that you know uh, most of the information we get in the mainstream media is based on predictive programming uh, to try and influence people to go in a certain direction um, and especially now with with um, the situation in the world um, increasing in its dissonance the aim is to get people entangled and um, attached to that dissonance and I said that um, you know if we get if we get programmed certain beliefs then those beliefs become our perceptions and then our perceptions become our experiences and we live out those uh, perceptions and those beliefs and of course then we get the result that um, we have been programmed to experience predictive programming and that is a kind of loop pattern that we need to step back from now and then um, in the subject of the coronal mass ejections which are these bursts of, of magnetic uh, energy from the Sun which sends out not only huge bursts of the magnetic field but also um, plasma energy and um, other aspects in the that are in the coronal outburst um, of course we know that these have strong physical effects on technologies and that they can disrupt um, the electricity grid the communications grid satellites and all these technical infrastructures but the question was how would they impact how would these waves of, of uh, magnetic energy and, and plasma um, affect life on this planet and one of the things that I, I said was that um, that some of the esoteric traditions have um, said that evolution on this planet um, is related to when the cosmic winds blow I when there's certain cosmic phenomena that ar that arrives to the planet Earth because um, this all ties in with what is our perception of life and life on this planet and the orthodox programming that we've been told um, through orthodox science was that evolution on this planet is an accident and that it just started by accident and um, the evolution was just a hit and miss adaptation but that view really is that life is an accident on that just grew on the back of a lifeless planet um, which is a basically a dead rock hurtling through a lifeless universe and that really is um, for me um, complete nonsense and I do sense now that um, majority of people realize that that is nonsense because um, we are in a sentient intelligent 
the cosmos and um, all reality is um, based on consciousness and so the planets themselves likewise um, have a degree of consciousness and sentience and intelligence and therefore our sun which has been worshipped uh, since antiquity by our ancestors um, is also a an intelligent sentient being that we only perceive as a star that we call the sun and the sun has always given life to our solar neighborhood and with there would be no life on earth without the sun the sun is a life giving entity of course um, such huge energy can also have destructive effects um, and energy, you know, energy can destroy as well as create. That's the nature of the power of energy. And yet, however, the sun is a life-giving, a life-affirming entity. That's its the function is to provide for life. And so, therefore, when certain solar blasts or what we call corona mass ejections, when they arrive, um, although they may have some uh, other destructive influences on the things we have created, on our technologies and artificial uh, constructs, on organic life, they've always been life-affirming. Because corona mass ejections are, uh, are arriving all the time, not all the time, but quite frequently. It's only the major ones that can have a noticeable effect. And usually it's noticeable through our civilization, through our artifacts, and now through our technologies. So these secondary const constructs can have noticeable effects. But on Earth, humanity, we have not really noticed them before when they've entered the Earth. But if a huge one comes, then um, what effect will it have upon life on this planet? And um, could they be used or can they serve an evolutionary purpose? Well, I, we, you know, in our talk, we all agreed that yes, they can have an evolutionary purpose. And um, I would say that, you know, the, such uh, impacts from the sun can be seen as evolutionary upgrades. Now the sun is like a hub in the whole cosmos and, and all the stars can be seen as hubs or nodes and the stars themselves receive energy from the galactic center um, and from you know from outside of the solar system. It's as if the sun is a recipient of this neighborhood. It receives energy from outside the solar neighborhood and then collects it and sends it to the planets or this solar system, this solar neighborhood. But the sun has to act as a transformer to drop down the energy so we can receive it. The same, th same thing as um, a power station, when it produces the energy, it sends it off. But it, the energy doesn't come straight to our homes because if it came directly from the power station, it would be so such a large degree of energy, it would blow the, the fuses of the house and, and we would be in danger. And so it gets stepped down by transformers. So by the time it arrives at the home, it is of a lower, um, a lower energy, a lower strength, and we can use it in our appliances without blowing their fuses. And the sun acts in a similar way, I would say, that the energy it receives from the cosmos, it steps it down so it can be used as a life-affirming energy when it goes into the solar neighborhood and and is received by the solar planets in the solar system. If it was not stepped down we, and we received it directly, um, it would blow the fuse of our planet, literally. And that's also why all the planets, um, our planet Earth and other planets, have to some degree um, shielding. And our Earth has a magnetic field which shields cosmic radiation and allows a certain degree to get through. So we are protected and not burned, um, not irradiated too strongly. And we know now that the magnetic field around the Earth is weakening and weakening 
dramatically in certain areas. So it's also an opportune moment to receive more of certain cosmic energies. And if you wanted, I mean, like in any system, if you wanted to upgrade the system, um, then rather than closing it down, you would somehow, you know, um, upgrade it by producing more energy in the system. And I would say that um, the cosmos and our solar system operate similarly. Uh, we're not, we are an ongoing life project, and so at certain stages we need not to be closed down, but to give an, an energy upgrade. And so those waves at certain moments or in, in cosmic time, when the cosmic winds blow, will be arriving. And how also how open and receptive is life on this planet would um, also determine how consciously or to what degree we are aware and able to utilize those energies. And maybe at certain times um, we need to pass a threshold, a threshold in our evolutionary path, in our path of evolvement, and we need a push over that threshold. And it could be that um, in the upcoming future, we are we are told that we are um, uh, set to receive stronger coronal mass ejections with a weakened magnetic field around the Earth, that we may be receiving energy that will push certain life on this planet um, past a threshold to move into a next stage of evolvement. And on that theme, um, just well, I won't say coincidentally because I, you know, such coincidences do not occur. But synchronicity-wise, I was speaking with uh, my colleague this morning who receives the aid messages, and those of you who follow my other um, my work, my other kind of side, my other parallel work with the Abe updates, will know that I've been giving out these recent updates. But actually, just this morning, I was speaking with my colleague and. They had said that they had felt um, certain energies today and and a message popped up, a communication popped up in their mind which she shared with me and um, the first line of it which I will read is this, um, there's a pressure building up to push you past the threshold. It will get your attention to enable you to look in a differing direction and not continuing in the same loop pattern now. And I thought that was very uh, kind of synchronicity with both the loop pattern I had been talking about, how we're stuck in the perceptual belief loop, and also the fact that we are, a pressure is building up and it is on the horizon to arrive in some way or form, perhaps through coronal mass ejections, uh, to push us past the threshold. And it'll get our attention. It will be a noticeable energy. And so this could be part of um, the human involvement, which has been uh, talked about in many indigenous traditions also about these transitional times. And we were never sure how such boost um, or or transition would um, be served to us, would arrive? Could it be through um, certain cosmic energy arriving, um, perhaps in parallel with coronal mass ejections? Um, I for one cannot be sure, but I think we have to be open to this possibility. And of course the Earth is receiving cosmic radiation at all times. So we are in an energetic environment. At certain times, that energetic environment may produce a boost, a wave, a pressure of energy that supports and pushes sentient life on this planet and all life on this planet. So the question is, we have to be open to it. Now, um, we need to safe surf those waves that are arriving, which means being balanced, grounded, open, receptive, and allowing 
of these things to happen, not to be in fear or to block them um, or to be closed up. Why would, we, why would we be in fear? Well, because fear is being produced artificially, although it's very real in a, practi in a physical sense, across the planet. Right now, in the, especially in the last couple of years, there's been a, a dramatic increase in the amount of fear, anxiety, destabilization, unrest, dissonance uh, across the planet, and is increasing and is ratcheting up to a very high degree at the moment, especially with certain geopolitical um, conflicts across the planet uh, in, in more than one region. And we are being programmed through predictive programming and through mainstream media to be entangled in these narratives. We entangled in these conflicts, in these medical, political, financial upheavals that have been orchestrated across the planet. And the danger is, is that we become energetically entangled in these uh, conflicts and disturbances, and then we get kind of pulled into a lower vibration. Um, now, if there was going to be a great wave of energy in coming across the planet, it cannot be stopped. You cannot hold back the cosmic, t the cosmic tide the same way that you cannot stand on the beach and hold back the tide. Um, I think it was King Midas who tried um, one of the kings who tried to do that, to stand on the beach and hold back the tide, but you cannot do that. Um, and so if there are some elements on this planet who are wanting to um, st st hold back humanity's personal evolvement, then you they know full well that you cannot hold back the cosmic tide, the cosmic waves from arriving. But what you can do, or attempt to do, is to lower the capacity for humanity to receive those um, energetic impulses and to, um, let's say, dampen the human receptivity to respond to those energetic impulses. And a way to do that is to lower the vibratory level of humanity, entangle humanity as much as possible in a lower resonance, a lower frequency, because everything, everything is frequency, everything is vibration in the material, from the non-material to the material, Reality, everything works on frequency and vibration. I won't go into that now, but um, each person can do their research to verify that. Um, and so to be uh, closed up to incoming energy frequencies, rather than entraining with that energy, if our energy is previously lowered to a lower uh, vibration and resonance, we may not match with that. We may receive it to some degree, but we won't have the full response to it because we're not fully receptive to it. Our antennas are closed, so to speak. So just like with any kind of broadcast, with a television, so to say, if your antenna on your house is not pointing in, that di in the right direction to receive the broadcast, you'll get a, a, a static, scatty picture, not a clear picture. So I think we can say that there may be an attempt to um, lower humanity's receptivity to receive a, um, a not a clear picture of those energies coming in. And we need to be safe surfers, um, not to get entangled in the external um, negative uh, lower energy conflicts that put us in fear, anxiety and close us down but to step away from those loops, those programming loops, clear out our own um, energies and to work on our balance, our inner harmony, our groundedness so that we can be receptive and open to any um, energies or, inf or similar kind of uh, cosmic impacts that will arrive to this planet. So this was a subject that was brought up yesterday and I felt it 
sufficiently important at this time especially especially when it ties in with the aid message of today about us passing the threshold um, to talk about it um, again here as part of the perspectives and I feel it's critical at these times especially now in these weeks ahead and these months ahead until the end of the year when the chaos dissonance fracturing uh, in these external events will impact us like never before we need to be out of the loop out of the lower energies shift our focus onto our own balance groundedness and receptivity to finer forces and um, so let us all be safe surfers now thanks for listening